the legendary Dan Hughes is here. It's a treat for you. It's a treat for me. We get to talk about women's basketball, whether it's the Storm, Brianna Stewart, Cheryl Reeve, you name it. A lot to get to. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday to you and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. You guys keep showing up for us, over 200,000 of you in August alone, the way we show up for you six days a week. And of course, it's not just me, it's the entire team across the board over at The Next, where we have over 100 reported pieces every month on the past, present, and future of women's basketball. Go ahead and subscribe today. You can get every single one of those sent to your inbox, $9 a month, $72 a year. Make sure you subscribe and support the work that we are doing at thenexthoops.com. And so, through this time, through the time at the next, through my time as a journalist covering this league, I have had the privilege of being able to get to know Dan Hughes, be able to cover his teams, and be able to learn about basketball, which, Coach, I do every time we talk. So I am delighted to have you here. I was I was pleased and heard from so many people who were pleased to hear you on the Storm broadcasts over the last couple of games We'll talk Storm segment one, Brianna Stewart, you know, a little bit something about her segment two, Cheryl Reeve segment three, who you had the, uh, uh, the chance to coach with, as a matter of fact, on numerous occasions. But Dan, just to start with Seattle, and I, we framed it, I've talked about them on the program, we've had Noe, uh, Noel Quinn on the show as well, talking about this, Poti Chapman as well about the fact that this was a team with a lot of talent that had to come together quickly. And we'll dig into the numbers a little bit, but I guess as we are here on the doorstep of the playoffs, what are your top line takeaways from seeing them up close as to how close they are to where they need to be? Boy, right on the borderline. You know, they're, they're, they're better than a lot of the teams, you know, that, that, they play in the courts of the year, but when you're comparing them to the best, I saw them play New York. They are right there. Mm-hmm. You know, they go three quarters head to head and they're learning about what it takes for that last run. But I don't care whether you're a young team or an old team. That's something that you almost have to go through to understand how to put it together. So they're sitting right there and a very dangerous team, in my opinion, in the playoffs. I think it's so interesting. I remember watching the moment your version of the storm had that kind of breakthrough moment where it wasn't just being able to compete with anyone, but you know, the phrase is like you stepped on people's necks. Like you knew in that moment, there was those extra set of plays to make to put a game away. I don't know that we've seen the storm do that yet. And I wonder how much that, comes from for all the talent on this roster this team is shooting 28 percent from three-point range this is last in the WNBA and I guess I wonder whether you can truly put teams away without having that uh, you know that dagger three down the stretch when you need to do it well you raise a good point you know and and you wonder if that has potential to grow with Seattle, mm-hmm. just just to be blunt, they, they do so many things well. I don't know if that's one you you know it can happen, but you know I, when I went to Seattle in eighteen, um, we we had a very gifted offensive team, yeah. but to put people away and to become a dominant team, we had to be better defensively. And and I remember you know I always studied the stats for the games, and I remember watching the trending of us becoming a better defensive team. Um, that's an interesting point because I, 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 they have not trended towards shooting the three better. Um, and I don't know if I immediately look at that and say that's a strength unattained. I don't, I don't know if they're going to have to win games much like my Cleveland teams back in the day 
starting defensively and ending defensively. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, that team in 2018 led the lead in three point percentage. You guys shot better than 37%. So absolutely that team was very good defensively also fourth in defensive rating overall, but Oh, what a powerhouse it was offensively as well. You're right. And, and you again, you go back to this team. And what's interesting, we talked about room to grow, right? Jewel Lloyd is an accomplished three-point shooter, as you well know, but she's sub 30% this year. You know, the idea, I think, in part was, all right, you get a Skylar Diggins Smith to lead the offense. You have someone like Neka Gwumake to be able to change the gravity. And then Jewel is getting better, more uncontested shots. That hasn't necessarily translated. Sammy Whitcomb, who was such a key contributor for your teams through the years as well. Sammy's below 30% as well. And Skyler's threes started slow. She had uh, a period during the middle of the year, I think about 10 games where she shot 40%. And to be frank, uh, to my mind, it was, all right, well, that's Skyler getting it. You know, she's back from 20 months away from the game. Uh, but that has regressed as well. And so when those three primary snipers are not hitting from beyond, I, I mean, how much easier does it get to kind of defend those different weapons because the space that defenses need to operate in against Seattle is reduced? Yeah, um, I, I agree with what you're saying. I will say this to you, it, 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 you know, and you make a point that makes me think even deeper. Jewel Lloyd, for example, and, and Sammy as a follow-up, yeah. they have the ability to really get hot. And Jewel Lloyd is as good as any player I've ever seen in key moments. Absolutely. And, and Noe uses her, and Noe was a part of our staffs. Uh, Noe uses her so well in those key moments. If, if, if Jewel just kind of looks at, at the whole game as a key moment, you might see her explode because uh, she is, is quite honestly an absolute joy to watch, let alone when you coached her, watching her was, was, was incredibly. And Sammy is somebody that if those two get hot, that could change the dynamics, for example, on the three-point line. And, and don't discount that opportunity because – they both are primetime players, and the playoff will bring that out. What's interesting with Jewel, too, and it's just it, it's a personal pet peeve of mine. We, it's been studied. There's this understanding past three point percentage does not predict future three point percentage as well as free throw percentage does when we've studied it, both when you look at college prospects and even early on in the pros. And I say that because there were folks who had dismissed Lexi Hull as a three-point shooter because her, in limited opportunities, her percentages were not great here in the pros. I looked at somebody who was an elite uh, free throw shooter who hit threes at Stanford, and you put all that together, and the fact that she's shooting north of 49% from three this year is not a surprise to me. And why am I bringing that up? Obviously, Jewel, who was, again, in the upper 80s in free throw percentage, and somebody who has had a ton of years shooting 35, 38, 39% from three as well, even during seasons where she was the focal point of opposing defensive schemes. It just does not seem particularly likely to me that Jewel will continue to struggle from beyond the arc. And then Sammy, you know, it's a similar point where Sammy has a track record throughout her entire career of hitting threes and hitting big threes, as we both have seen in person. So in a short series, and right now that's lining up for Seattle versus Las Vegas, it's exciting to think <laughs> about what that could look like, especially if you need to go steal a game on the road. Oh, boy, that, that one. And, 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 you know, I there's still games to be played, but that series you, you've identified. Uh, <laughs> and I have – so many games I watch, I have this this feeling of, of feeling love for both teams, you know, because you got Becky Hammond, who was one of my greatest players, you know, and and then you've got Noe, who succeeded me, and you've got players on both teams with Alicia Clark and Jewel Lloyd and Sammy and so many others that uh, 
Uh, you know, it, it's a mixed feeling that that I watch those games with, but that one will be primetime TV. It's, I mean, it's WNBA finals level talent in the first round of the WNBA playoffs. And yeah, you, you probably can't root for any team over another team because the, the Dan Hughes player and coaching tree is <laughs> endless across the league. So I, well, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I don't mean to be boastful, but I love the fact that my former players and my former assistants have been so successful. Um, uh, 12 of the last 14 champions were, you know, either my teams, my assistants, my former assistants teams, or my players' teams. And even this year, one through five, we have ties to, three assistants and two former players that I coach. Uh, So that, for an old coach, that's priceless. If you hadn't brought it up, I was going to. Because well, people, I, I'm you, sorry. I, I'm very no, proud I'm of those players. And, and I love them to death. And I continue to love them to death long after they're playing years. Well, I, as a point of personal privilege, let me say, having spoken to so many of them about you, I know the feeling is mutual. So a lot more to get to. A uh, certain former player of yours in New York leading the looks like number one seed, Brianna Stewart, in segment two. We're going to talk. Uh, a lot more about Stewie, but first, I want to talk to you guys about Miracle Made Sheets. And so we are transitioning here in New Jersey from summer to fall. And what's great about Miracle Made Sheets is it doesn't matter if it's a really hot night, if it is cooler, Miracle Made and their temperature controlled sheets allow you to sleep at the perfect temperature all night lawn. These are self-cleaning sheets with self-cooling properties for better quality sheets, better quality sleep. They always look their best. I'm always happy with my Miracle Made sheets in any color that I've gotten them. My wife too. We're both thrilled and you can be too. If you go to trymiracle.com slash locked on, you can try Miracle Made sheets today. And they even have a special deal for you the listener. Okay. Use the promo code locked on at checkout and you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Again, go to trymiracle.com slash locked on and use code locked on to claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Thank you to Miracle Made for sponsoring this episode. Lockdown Women's Basketball is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time gives you the opportunity, whatever the live event is, no matter what kind, you can go share memories with that event with family and friends this year. Game Time actually has this new feature called Game Time Pitch that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. It filters out the fluff. It shows you the incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through everything that's going on. I can tell you using game time means that I'm able to take my children, whether it is to theater or to live music, which uh, Dan, I know you know a little something about going to see concerts, going to see plays. It all matters. It all matters where you sit, what your view is, whether it is the view of the show and being able to listen to a band that you love and care about, or for my younger daughter, Juliet, when I take her to a ball game, she wants to know, hey, am I going to get a good up close view of the bigs so I can learn from them as I keep working to get better as a basketball player as well. Game Time's app offers you this 360 degree view so I can get the Juliet seal of approval before I bring her to a ball game as well. So <laughs> game time app, create an account and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, before we get into Stewie, I just got to know, best live show you've seen recently? Because I know you you always are always on uh, I, I, on point with this. Well, boy, that now, now, now that's 
I got a lot of choices. I, I have to tell you, I saw the Rolling Stones in Cleveland Stadium. And for the whole atmosphere, that was amazing. But the best show I've been to, Richie mm -hmm. Fure, uh in New Jersey. Uh, Richie just turned 80. They celebrated his birthday. Richie's from Poco and Buffalo Springfield. But that was the single best performance I've seen. Now I got Ringo Starr on on Sunday. So, you know, we got a lot of things that could be happening here. This you live right. And not surprising that the best things happen in New Jersey, but I'm glad to hear that you get to see Ringo as well. That that is awesome. I, I enjoy your reports on what you go to see uh, as much as I do talking basketball with you. So that, well, yeah. one more story for you, Howard. I'm Please. sorry, but not at all. I, I went over and watched Indiana practice, you know, and I had a chance to have, uh, to meet Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. What do you think Caitlin Clark and Dan Hughes talked about? Um, I, it has to be music. Music. <laughs> love it. I love it. And it's, love it. it's the universal language, which makes a lot of sense. So it is. So in terms of Brianna Stewart, who we mentioned up top, and um, I, I was amused. I think I've talked about this on the podcast. Somebody uh, had written that she's exiting her prime, which was very, very entertaining as she turns 30 and, of course, is as dominant as you'll see a player be down the stretch here for this New York Liberty team. I, I had a chance to talk to Sandy Brondello, um, again, part of the coaching tree, uh, for you about the fact that Stewie is taking on more of the playmaking role as a one as well. You know, she continues to just be able to do a little bit of everything. And I, I wonder what you're seeing specifically this year from Brianna Stewart that is even, let's say, a further evolution than the player she's been in the past. Well, she's one of those great ones that she doesn't need the attention mm -hmm. right now. Her, she wants to be the MVP of the finals. That's, that's what Stewie wants. Mm -hmm. And I watched her in that game. I called the game when, when they played Seattle. And that was as good a Stewie as I've, I've ever seen. And I've seen Stewie as an MVP. And, yeah. and uh, I, I mean, sh she is such a good teammate that she just wants, she, she just wants to enhance the product. Right. But when the time is right, Trust me, she's as good as it gets. And I, that, that time will be right in the finals, I think, if, if things work out and they find themselves there. Yeah, just this week, you know, she started a game one for 10, which happens to anybody, and then makes four key shots down the stretch and takes New York to the win. You know, seems to know the when to, to use the Gina Oriema phrase, uh, as well as any player I have ever seen. I, I want to take you back. I remember standing with you at ESPN Studios after the 2016 draft lottery. And at that time, you were with San Antonio. And so you were disappointed that night. because And, and, and you didn't make any effort to pretend otherwise. You know, this game plan. <laughs> you know, it was all like, oh, well, there are a lot of good players. Who knows? You know, it was, you know, that was the Stewie lottery. We all knew it. Nobody pretended otherwise. And... Yet, you see the way life twists and turns happen. You know, how amazed are you, if you didn't put yourself back in your shoes to that night, how much those careers of yours and hers have come to be intertwined? And has she been as good or even better a player than you expected on that night, where obviously the expectations are already so high for her? Yeah, she's been as good and, and probably even better. Uh, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. And I'll just give you a story, um, a quick one. R.C. Buford was a, was a great mentor of mine at, at San Antonio. He's the GM, along with Greg Popovich, the coach. They had a huge influence on, on me in those 12 years. But I had told R.C. just how great a player I believe Stewie was going to be, you know. Well, anyway, he went to see, I think it was a game maybe last year or – the year before. I don't remember exactly. He was at a game and he texted me from the game and he said, I now know how, why you felt so strongly about Brianna, about Stewie. Mm -hmm. And 
that's just an example. There, th this guy is, has had an incredible career putting teams together, but he, he understood what Stewie was going to bring to an organization, to a team, and um, it's, it's just unique. They're the favorites, right? I mean, I, I you yeah. know, I, I know I, it's, it, it seems like there's been a hierarchy the last couple of years. Um, and certainly last year, Vegas and New York seemed to top, but I, I certainly anything can happen in the playoffs and Minnesota's real good. Connecticut's real good, but New York's the team to beat going to the playoffs, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I watch a, a tremendous amount of WNBA basketball, usually from my, downstairs with two or three TVs on and, and, and watching everybody, but they're the best team I've seen. And Sandy needs kudos, you know, for what she's done. Cheryl needs kudos for what she's done. But, but also I, I have loved what Chrissy Sides has done in Indiana. That's another example of a young coach that started one and eight and they're playing at a pretty high level right now. So there's a lot of good teams gaining momentum, but New York without question to me, has has attacked the regular season like a team that wants to be champions. Yeah, it's not clear to me that there are many teams better than Indiana at this point. And for Christie to do that in yeah. the cauldron of fire that has been the attention that team has gotten in Caitlin Clark's rookie year is really striking. But I, I'm glad you mentioned Cheryl and like a pro, uh, you you do this for a living. So you know you lead me into segment three. Back to talk Cheryl Reeve right after this commercial break. I'm Howard Magdal. You are listening to Locked On Women's Basketball. Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and persistence. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your car alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your car, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. Take it from me, somebody who knows nothing about cars. I use my car as a conduit to get me to WNBA games to go cover them. But eBay's guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time. It's got this little green check mark or your money back. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Back here with the great Dan Hughes in segment three, talking about Cheryl Reeve. And Dan, there's this picture, I think I've shared it with you before, of you guys as youngsters on that Cleveland <laughs> staff. Cheryl's got, you know, the, the, the big early aughts hair that goes along with it. You know, obviously the league and you guys have come so far and done so much since then. Do you, did you have a sense back at that time when you looked at that staff of what was ahead for the two of you? I, I, I mean, between you, you have, I mean, almost 600 victories in the WNBA. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't know Cheryl real well. I knew who she was. Uh, and then I had an opening on my staff. Lisa Boyer had gone to be with Don Staley, who she's still with Don Staley. She is. And uh, so Cheryl, uh, you know, calls me and, and, and I bring her in for an interview. Wow. She just blew me away. She just, it, it was an easy decision to say that's what we need. Uh, so I, I had a feeling this was going to be a special coach in a lot of ways. And having her on a staff, you know, typically I try to put assistants in positions of strength. Yeah. She was so good at analyzing other teams. I literally had her do almost every team. And, and normally I, I kind of divide it up. It's a little bit. But she was that good. She mm -hmm. was that good. So in many ways, that doesn't surprise me. I, what was surprising was that 
for me to convince other owners and people that that you better you better hire her. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look back with smiles now because there 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 was at least one or two times that that I'm like I I told you <laughs> that she's going to be really special, <laughs> and and Minnesota was 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 uh, and Roger Griffith and 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 I absolutely love the, the Minnesota owner uh, Glenn Taylor, yeah. loving to death. They were very smart. It's worked out okay for him so far, I would say. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> and and what's remarkable here, and and again, the links are quick to say that they don't get enough credit. So they'll probably listen to this podcast and say, oh, for you to say New York is the team to beat going into the playoffs. Oh, it's 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 criticizing Minnesota again when the links are obviously, you know, right there. And they are. Listen, the, the links are right now on track to be the number two seed, to have home court everywhere except in a potential final series against the Liberty, the target center, as you know, a very difficult place to play. And up and down that roster, they have players who are performing at levels at or beyond even where people would necessarily project them. I looked at somebody like Nafisa Collier, who was a sixth overall pick in the draft, sixth overall pick. And obviously, let's see them be on my all WNBA first team and, uh, you know, easily. And she's probably the second or third person on my MVP ballot. You know, uh, Asia Wilson, I have a top uh, the ballot. And then, you know, you have her and you have Stewie. And, you know, it, it's, again, Kayla McBride, who you had the, the chance to coach, I know, you know, is playing as well as she has throughout her career. And this is well into her second decade playing. What is it about... Cheryl that allows her to bring out the very best in so many players. Well, I think, I think there's a couple things she does really well. Uh, She gets into a season and she probably within the season coaches the team better than maybe anybody I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, there, there are coaches that plan for the season and, 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 and are very good at that. She gets into the season. She understands the strengths and the weaknesses, not from an off-season evaluation, from an in-season evaluation. And she tends to bring that out, you know, in ways. What she's done with Fee, to me, is is maybe the height of her ability as a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, she is not only taken, and, I, and I'm a, a fan. I've, I've always been a fan of hers. I was... I had a lower draft pick. I was playing, praying somehow she would get to me, but that certainly didn't happen. But um, but she's took Nafisa Collier and and made her believe that you are an MVP candidate. And a lot of that I give credit to Cheryl. That mm-hmm. belief, because players will respond to how you believe in them. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same way with uh, uh, Kayla McBride. I, I drafted Kayla. And people don't realize she was a leading scorer as a rookie on, on, a, on a Becky Hammond team, mm-hmm. for example, back then. And, but to see her play at this level and have those two as captains, uh, that, that says a lot of believing in good people and, and, and making those good people, you know, play at a, an incredible high level. To just kind of go into the stats as a thing to get us out, we're almost out of time here. But when you go back and you look, year by year, the hallmarks of those Minnesota teams that won championships were defense, you know, in the same way for those Cleveland Rockers teams that you had, right? And so her defensive rating, the the 2024 Lynch under Cheryl was the best defensive rating that they have had since 2017, the last time they won a championship. They were 91-7 <clears throat> back then. They're 92-2 in 2024. Offensive rating, best they've had since 2017, a 102 offensive rating, 106.3 back in 2017. So you put the net rating overall, it's as good a Minnesota Lynch team as we've seen since those championship teams to take nothing away from Fee, nothing away from Taylor McBride. But we know there were five Hall of Famers in that starting lineup back in 2017 with Maya, with Simone, with Sill, who 
fit in seamlessly by 2017 when she'd had a full year to be able to prepare Lindsay Well and of course and Rebecca Brunson the five-time champion so you put all that together and I just wonder is this the best coaching job Cheryl Reeve has done to take nothing away from coaching those teams and putting stars together not an easy thing no guarantee but is this the best one yeah but I think you also got to give the executive Cheryl Reeve and her staff. I, I remember it, it, she came out of the gate in free agency and signed some players, bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember texting her and saying, you know what? This, 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 this is a, a great beginning for you, you know, in regard to it. And, and I, I liked her draft too. And mm -hmm. There hasn't been room for her to develop quite as much, but I still liked her draft, for example. But to answer your question, yes, and I'll tell you why it's the best coaching job. She had to coach the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of coaches really struggle having to balance being the Olympic head coach and being a college or WNBA head coach. That's a hard balance. You've got a lot of energy that's being drawn from you. So to answer your question, I would say yes. And I would also toss in there the fact she won a gold medal that, that, that this, this has been the pinnacle of, of, of a lot of great things Cheryl's done. Sure would be something. I mean, they really could win the WNBA title. And what a double. What a, to be able to do that yeah. in the same year. And just to kind of throw back to a stat we had from segment one, they're shooting 38% from three. When you get to the postseason, yeah. being able to hit those shots late, really going to matter. It, it's going to be fascinating to see how this all shapes out. Well, Dan Hughes, it is always a delight to chat with you, <laughs> to see you on the broadcast, to talk about those stories. Uh, I, I look forward to doing it many, many times in the future. But thank you so much for your time. And to our listeners, thank you so much for making us your first listen every single Day, we will be back with you tomorrow. Kennedy Burke of the New York Liberty will be joining us talking about the Liberty's pursuit of the first ever franchise title. Until then, I am Howard Magdal, wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day.